Welcome back. The topic of this lesson is a tense called aorist. We say aorist. Ever heard of aorta? Well, it has nothing to do with aorist. But I understand that if you speak Greek, you will have an idea about what this tense is. By the way, this lovely artwork was made by Indiga Healer, who has a lot more awesome doodles on her channel that I'm going to link here in the description, so please check them out. Okay, let's discuss how, how do we express the past. So far, we've used the past tense, perfekat. For instance, I learned nauchiosam, or nauchilasam, if you're a woman. You learned nauchiosi, and so on. But what if you wanted to stress that something has just happened? I have just learned something new. How would you say that? Well, for one, you can use the word upravo, just. Upravo sam naučila nešto novo. That's, that's one, and that's perfectly legit. But in Serbian, we have another way to do this. And you're guessing... It's by means of aorist. And here's what it would sound like in aorist. Upravo naučih nešto novo. Upravo naučih nešto novo. Let me tell you about this controversial tense. It's not used in official documents. It's replaceable, as you can see, perfect does a pretty good job of taking the role of aorist. It has a nasty habit to sound archaic, depending on the context. Some verbs are more commonly used in aorist than others. But nonetheless, aorist is widely used in speech. And you need it to be able to construct other, other tenses. You'll see how. But before we proceed, I'd like to make another digression. Remember verb aspects? Verbs in Serbian can be imperfective, meaning they signify an action that is happening over a period of time. It's continuous. And perfective, signifying an action that is discrete, done once and finished, or repetitive in discrete portions. Some verbs have dual aspect. That is, they are both perfective and imperfective, depending on the context. Such are verbs videti, to see, and truti, to hear. You can often recognize pairs of perfective-imperfective verbs associated with an action. For example, pevati, to sing, imperfective, and otpevati, perfective. To, fin um, to finish singing. And there's another one, zapevati, which is to begin singing. Pevati, otpevati, zapevati. Then there's umirati, to die, imperfective, prolonged, continuous, versus umreti, perfective, to die and, well, be done with it. This probably reminds you of continuous versus simple tenses in English. But in Serbian, this is not a tense, it's an aspect. Okay, why am I mentioning this? Because aorist takes only perfective verbs. You can use imperfective verbs, but then you're not building aorist, but it's called imperfekat. And you don't want to use imperfekat unless you want to sound really archaic. You can still only find this tense in um, epic poems or really old texts. Here we go. How do we build aorist? Well, we take the infinitive base and smash some extensions onto it, depending on the person. Not the gender, though. Unlike perfekat, aorist sounds the same whether you speak it's spoken by a man or by a woman. And these extensions are H, that's H for me, 
Nothing for you, nothing for him, her, it. Smo for us, that's S-M-O. Ste for you all, S-T-E. And she for them, sh e But um, about this infinitive base stem, let's stick with the verbs that end with ti, t, in infinitive, for now. You get the basis by discarding that ti off of infinitive. For example, saznati, to learn, to find out. You take off the ti. And you get the infinitive base sazna. Then your aorist becomes ja saznach, ti sazna, on, ona, ono sazna, mi saznasmo, vi saznaste, oni saznashe. As usual, you can omit the personal pronouns. I suggest you try this out and do this for verbs prochitati to read, and scorchiti, to jump, for practice. How do you say, only now did I read your message? And only now is teksad, teksad. And message is poruka. So you want to say, only now did I read your message. Watch the cases. Tek sad pročitah tvoju poruku. Look at this interesting use here. Pročitali više tu knjigu. This means, did you read that book already? And this is said in an impatient tone. And it probably implies that you know they are still reading it. You know that Latin saying attributed to Caesar, Veni vi divici? I came, I saw, I conquered. Here it is in Serbian. In aorist. Dođoh, videh, pobedih. These are from verbs doći, to come, videti, to see, and pobediti, to win, to conquer. Uh-oh. We use the verb that ends with ci, ch, e. Look what you've done now. Doci somehow gave birth to dojo, j. This verb doci really likes to misbehave. Look at it. No, just, just look at it. Here it is in Cyrillic too. Look at that. In past tense, in perfect. It conjures this letter sh out of nowhere. So we say došao sam or došla sam. Došli smo, došla smo, došli ste, etc. If you want to call someone, come, you say doji. There is j again. This is, imp this is imperative, by the way. So let me repeat. Doci in aorist is Dojoch. It doesn't follow the rules we laid out in the previous slides because it doesn't end with T. Let's look at another verb, pasti, to fall. This one does end with TI, but it's not just TI, it's STI, STI. And this is also a specific case and it doesn't act as you would expect it to. In aorist, this becomes padoch, pade, pade, padosmo, padoste, padoše. And yet another one, iseci, to cut, but not continuously to cut, but, you know, to slice, to cut out. And here's how this sounds in aorist, isekoch. Iseče, iseče, isekosmo, isekoste, isekoše. Here we encounter yet another level of complexity because the phantom 
K that we see in first person becomes CH in second and third person singular. But this is actually not so unexpected, since K and CH are generally connected. In front of E, I, A, that's E, E, A, K tends to turn into CH, and this is called palatalizatia. You can see this behavior in many places. Try one more. Obuchi, to wear, to put on. Here we have the same pattern, a phantom K that turns into CH in second and third person singular. Obukuh, obuche, obuche, obukosmo, obukoste, obukoše. And here's a very peculiar thing. You know how I said that you build aorist from infinitive base plus extensions? Well, to get the infinitive base of verbs that end with chi and sti, we take the first person singular of aorist and deprive it of oh. So it's kind of a sick cyclic definition. Think about that. Here, I think it might be useful to take a break, a few hours ideally, and then continue because I'm about to tell you all of this again, but from another direction, so you can reconsolidate your knowledge. Please tell me how this works for you. Does it help or maybe doesn't make a difference? Let us take a look at a few sentences. They are all in aorist, so they express an action that was recently performed. And apart from that, I'd like you to tell me what else they have in common. Odigrasmo partiu šaha. We played a game of chess. Dobro je, izdržasmo. Good, we endured. Obuko smo se brzo. We put our clothes on quickly. So, what do all these sentences have in common? Do they look like one another? Well, they are all in first person plural. It's we who did something. And second, all of these verbs end with smo, S-M-O. This is because smo is the appropriate extension for first person plural in aorist. But you've seen this extension before, too. Look at present tense. We are, mi smo. Past, we were, mi smo bili. There is some order in this chaos that is Serbian grammar. If you put all these sentences in past tense, this is what you get. Odigrali smo partiju šaha. Dobro je, izdržali smo. Obukli smo se brzo. There is this spark of order when you look at second person plural too. You, you all, are vi ste. Past tense, vi ste bili, you were. And here's aorist. Odigraste partiju šaha. You played the game of chess. Dobro je. Izdržaste. Obukoste se brzo. Take a minute to look at these verbs in their infinitive form. Odigrati. To play. Izdržati. To endure. Obuči. To dress, to put on. The first two, odigrati and Izdržati end with T. And the last one, obuči, ends with ĉi. But irrespective of that, they keep the extension ste, ste, in second person plural, or smo, 
SMO in first person plural. However, one thing does stand out. Here in the last example, obuchi, this becomes obukoste. There's this K that sneaked in, and this K in turn causes trouble when we try to work out what aorist is like in the remaining persons. Like third person singular, he, she, it. He dressed quickly is on se obuche. Not K anymore, but ch. This is because k, k turns into ch when it finds itself in front of a. That's a e i in English. This is an event that we call palatalizatia. There's this magical connection between k and ch seen across various examples, not only here in aorist. Palatalizatia also describes a link between g and j and also h and sh. So here are our sentences in third person singular, that's he. On odigra partiu shaha, or just odigra partiu shaha. Dobro je, izdrža. Obuče se brzo. This turns out to be the same in second person singular, that's you. So there is no way to differentiate whether you or he or she or it did something in aorist unless you use the pronoun explicitly or you see it from the context. How about first person singular, me, what about me? Odigrah partiu šaha. Dobro je, izdržah. Obukoh se brzo. And we're missing third person plural, they, oni, one, ona. Odigraše partiju šaha. Dobro je, izdržaše. Obukoše se brzo. To sum up, you build aorist from infinitive base plus extensions. And these extensions are h, nothing, nothing. Smo, ste, še. However, second person and third person singular can get an e extension if the verb is a chi or stib, that is, their infinitive ends with sti or chi. And if that is the case, you're probably gonna have an unexpected stem to put these extensions onto. And I have no better advice for you at this point, but to learn them by heart. Sorry. That's enough, I think. Comment, praise, criticize, like, subscribe, you know the drill. Pozdrav!